Welcome to another message from 2 Corinthians from the Greek language. The last class that we taught was entitled, what class? Premeditated. Premeditated Deliberate Giving. Premeditated Deliberate Giving. And the title of this message is The Hilarious Giver. The Hilarious Giver. And the 8th and the ninth chapter of 2 Corinthians are about giving, which is a very unpopular subject among churches and people, especially. But the Bible teaches from Genesis, the 4th chapter, that even right after they were cast out of the garden, that they were tithing and that Cain would not tithe, but Abel did. And then we went to Abraham in the, the battle or the slaughter of the kings, and we find out that they used to pile the goods up high, and the most precious goods would be on the top of the pile from the uh, spoils of war, and that they would dedicate to their gods, pagan gods, the top tenth portion, which was actually the most valuable, which would actually way out to probably 50 to 75 percent of the value of the whole booty. Now, <clears throat> we know later on that in 600 A.D. that Muhammad, uh, uh, 600, probably 20 A.D., that Muhammad demanded that his people give him a quarter of all of the booty down to the a thread and sewing needle of whatever they got in their booty. But the rest of theirs was that, the spoils of war, which was furthering the cause of Islam, so as to be, or Muhammad. They were called the Muhammadans, and that's basically what they were, the Muhammadans. We find out Abraham ties to Melchizedek, and then that is repeated again in Hebrews, the seventh chapter which we've studied. Hebrews 7th chapter, which we'll read that one more time. Hebrews the 7th chapter to set an understanding just in case you haven't studied the rest of these classes. You can go back and do that. They're out there on video and audio. But the 7th chapter, verses 1 through 10, we'll read that. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham as he was returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. That's where he went out and rescued Lot. And he rescued Sodom and Gomorrah's kings and all the five cities' kings. And they didn't uh, seem to care much about their service with God because God finally ended up destroying all the five cities himself. This should have brought them to their knees and educated them as to God's power and God's ability. In Genesis, the 14th chapter, verses 18 through 20, is where Abraham tithed to Melchizedek. To whom the Abraham apportioned a tenth of the, all the spoils was first of all by the translation of his name, King of Righteousness, which is a type of Jesus Christ, and then also King of Salem, which means King of Peace, which is a double type of our Savior without father, without mother, without genealogy. Now, what the Bible says is that, he, that none of that is recorded. Whether this was actually a pre-incarnate form of Jesus Christ or not is debatable throughout church history, so to speak. But he was definitely a type of Christ, whether he was the pre-incarnate Christ or not. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but like unto the Son of God, it was a type, a metaphor, an allegory, a typos of the Son of God. And he abides a priest forever, perpetually. Verse number four. Now observe how great this man was to whom Abraham, the patriarch, gave a tenth of the choice of spoils. And those, indeed, of the sons of Levi who received the priest office have commandment in the law to collect a tenth from the people. That is, from their brethren, although these are descended from Abraham according to the flesh. 
but the one whose genealogy is not traced from them collects the tenth from Abraham. That's Melchizedek. And blessed the one who had the promises. But without any dispute, the lesser is always greater than the, the greater is always looking down upon or blesses the lesser. And it says here in this translation, but without any dispute, the lesser is blessed by the greater. And in this case, mortal men receive tithes. But in that case, one receives them of whom it is witnessed that he lives forever, which is talking about Jesus Christ, our Savior, whether Melchizedek was literally him or a type of him. But we tie it to Jesus today. <clears throat> and so to speak, through Abraham, even Levi, who received tithes, paid tithes. For it was still, for he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. And we know that our children will be blessed with mercies and grace because we tithe. That is a promise of God. God promises that to us. Through here and many other places in the New Testament and the Old Testament. 9 and verse 2 were teaching the book of 2 Corinthians from the Greek language. And we're studying Greek grammar as we do that. And the Greek is not the most important thing, but the message is there. And that the original language is the language of inspiration. We translate it into our language, but the language in which it was written is what we call plenarily inspired, without doubt. Oida, gar, tain, prothemion, himon, hain, hepater, himon, koxa mai, koxa mai, makadosin, hote, akea, pares ku esate. Apo, Perusi, Kai, Tohimon, Zelos, Erythisten, Tus, Pleonas. The hilarious giver. Now we start out with a casual conjunction or particle that's gar even though it's the second word in this sentence. For I have known, for I have known the eagerness. Now this word here is prothemion. Prothemion means to lust forward. Sometimes we lust for the bad stuff and sometimes we lust for the good stuff, don't we? Girls, when you go into a bakery shop. <laughs> now, I've seen some women that, that, that were thin as razor blades and ate like horses. But the average normal person, when you eat too many calories, it shows up in the middle, doesn't it? Or on the south end when you're going north. One or the other. You lust forward... When you smell, you smell it, first of all. You smell it. Wow. You walk by a bakery, and, and it stops you, doesn't it? Now, basically, I don't know if there's anything in that bakery that's good for you. But it sure smells good, doesn't it? My doctor tells me that I should not eat any bread at all. That, uh, that wheat is the staff of death, <laughs> not the staff of life. It's not good for me. But people like bread, don't they? I like bread. Potatoes are kind of rough on the midsection, but they've got vitamins and things in them, but they do put weight on you very quickly. To lust forward. 
It means to look forward at someone with desire and lust. That's what it literally means. But now God is using this in a different way. That we're supposed to have lust forward eagerly. Of ye, him on, which, a little relative accuses the singular relative pronoun, which on behalf of hyper, now, now remember hyper, we got hyperglycemia, hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia. Hypo means low blood sugar, hyper means diabetes, high blood sugar. But this word can be a preposition and it can be an adverb. An adverb, it means to a higher or fuller degree. As a preposition, it means on the behalf of. So right here we have a preposition. On behalf of you, I magnify you. Kako me. First person singular, present, indicative, middle voice. I am magnifying you. I am boasting about you. I am bragging on you. I am commending you. As in our last class, uh, soldiers are commended and awarded with degrees of awards, medals, stripes on their shoulders and arms. I brag and I boast about you. I commend you. I build you up, Macedonians. That Achaia has already preparations. Paras schizazo has already made preparations, third person singular, perfect, indicative, passive, has already been caused to make preparations from last year. Parisi, Parisi. It's P-E-R, and then we have an Ypsilon there. It's like a Y, Parisi. Now, this is an adverb. It comes from Paras. And this means filled up, full. Sharon, do you know what a year me is in, in Hebrew? What does a year mean? You remember? A, completion. a complete circle. And that's got the Hebrew idea here because it means completed. Last year is completed, isn't it? You can't go live last year over again, can you? It's done and over with. Last year also, the little cumulative particle there, page 208 chi, the of you, zeal, the zeal of you. And that word zealos there, zealos, it, our English word zeal comes right out of it. It is stirred up. Third person singular, first heiress, indicative active. It stirred up the greater. Now let's go back and look at this in the Amplified Translation, 9 and verse 2. <clears throat> we get to look at the Greek. We get to look at the grammar. We get to see how the sentence is put together. And then we translate it and just expound on it. For I am well acquainted with your willingness. This means that's the lusting forward. Your readiness and your eagerness to promote it. And I have proudly told about you to the people of Macedonia, saying that Achaia... Most of Greece has been prepared since last year for this contribution. Most of Greece. Now we know where it's coming from. That's Macedonia. Remember the Macedonians. The Macedonian call. Most of Greece has been prepared for this offering since last year for this contribution. And consequently, your enthusiasm has stimulated the majority of them. They'll give and give and give and give and give. We're talking about giving. The hilarious giver. <clears throat> See, Marna, we got to it. Over there in Australia, we got to the hilarious giver. <clears throat> Nine and verse three. At Pampsa. At Pampsa. Day. Day. Tus. Tus. Adelphus. I don't hear you over there, Marilyn. I, I can say them. Okay, that, I want you to say them now. 
read out loud. They're missing you out there on the websites. Myrna wants to hear you talk. Okay. The next word is hina. Hina. May. To. Toxema. Himon. To. Heper. Himon. Kenothe. In. To. Mere. Tuto. Hina. Kathos. Eligon. Pares ku as. Minawe. That's right. That's a long, hard to pronounce word. Impepsa is another one. Impepsa. It comes from Pempo and it is first person singular, first heiress indicative active. I sent punctiliar action. I sent. And it actually, the verse starts out with they, a weak adversive conjuncture particle, page 85, if you want to write all this down in your little books. If you're over there in Australia or India or someplace, and I have sent to you this interlinear, you can write in the interlinear all of these things down. I didn't put it all down in there because I want you to follow and write these things down. So because of writing, they used to tell me they'd make you write your spelling words 10 times a piece or 15 or 20 times a piece. And if you goofed up real bad, write them 50 times a piece. You didn't get, to, you didn't get it. Well, that's what I'm doing here. I'm getting you to write down what these are so we'll, it will stick in your little head. I sent the brother, Adelphos. Now, I sent shows action, doesn't it? Now, in the Hebrew, you would have et, et here in the front of it, which is the sign of the direct object, and sometimes it has it in Greek, but here we don't. But this is accusedly plural masculine, the brothers. Accusedly plural masculine, even though there's women among this, because these are churches that we're talking about. There's women and brothers in these churches, but the ones that are sending out as messengers are brothers, aren't they? But just because it says masculine brothers, that doesn't mean in a church the brethren is girls and boys, men and women. In order that, Hina, that little conjunction, page 201. May, the, a, a particle of negation. Amen is a particle of affirmation, isn't it? Here we have may, and is a particle of negation, page 268. And the bragging, the boasting, the laudatory testament, the exaltation. Your brownie button, so to speak your stripes on your shoulder. I've been bragging about that. The bragging of us. Look at that word himon there. That's got the eight in front of it. So that is genitive, plural, masculine, or genitive, plural, first person pronoun. It's even the masculine too, by the way. And himon is us, our bragging. Our bragging. And then it says toe there, and we're again talking about the bragging, the bragging, the exaltation, the laudatory statements and testimonies on behalf of you. It might be completed up and emptied in the respect this. In order that, just as I kept on saying, having been prepared ye kept on being. <clears throat> I sent. Now we have the word bragging. And then the word here brought to a completion, emptied. And in the respect, this, I kept on saying, I've continued to say this, first person singular, imperfect indicative acting, elegone. And now we have the word having been prepared. Pares ku o os minoi. Nominative plural masculine, perfect participle passing, having been prepared. Nine and verse three. Still I am sending the brethren on to you lest our pride in you should be made an empty boast. Empty. 
Have you ever had an empty tank of gas? The car quits, doesn't it? Now, he said, I want you to understand, I want you to fulfill the promise that I want you to go on and do this. Because I don't want this boast to be empty. And this particular case, and so that you may be already, as I told you, that you should be and would be. Be ready for these brothers as they come. So Paul's writing this letter to them, the second Corinthian letter. And how many letters were there? Four letters. We don't have the other two, but we got two. <clears throat> Nine and verse four. May. Post. Eon. Maryland. The next word. El Thusen. Maryland. The next word. Seen. Emoi. Macadones. Kai. Yurisen. Himas. Aparasku astus. Katais ken tho men. Himais. Hina. Me lego. Humais. Yen te hipostase. Taute. Now, they actually, this sentence starts off with the third word. Marilyn, can you pronounce that third word? The third word? Yes, in 9 and 4. It just looks almost like English. Oh, like... Yeah. Epsilon, Alpha, Nu. Eon. Eon? Okay, yeah, that's it. Eon, May, Pulse. That's how it should start. This is kind of an idiom here, the whole first part of this sentence. Now that eon there is a third class conditional particle, which means the condition is undetermined but with prospect of determination. And what rules that is the very next word, the mode in the very next word, which is what? What is the mode there? Third person plural, second aorist, subjunctive active, subjunctive mode. And the subjunctive mode is a case of in perfection or subjunctive, it means that it may or may not happen. So if, lest if may come, seen together with me, the Macedonians, and they may find you not ready. You're not ready that ye might be ashamed, cause the bluffs. First person plural, first errors, subjunctive, passive. Can they disappoint Paul? Can this church disappoint Paul? It's, done it before. it's definitely. It, it can disappoint Paul. So Paul's telling them, don't do it. Don't disappoint me, and don't you be disappointed. And don't you blush. And then it says, we... Himes, that is nominee plural, masculine, first person pronoun. We, in order that, not particle of negation, I say, that's lego. Lego, legesa, lege, legomen, legedu, legusi, legain is how you conjugate the whole conjugation of lego. And I say, and I keep on saying, ye, you all, in the confidence, this. Now, word confidence there, it's hippo and stase. Now, I built a house in Fish Lake Valley one time, a room. I built a room on my house up there in Fish Lake Valley. I was just going to make a patio thing out there, but I did make it strong because everything I build is like a battleship. I did make it pretty strong, but it was only going to be a patio deck. Then I got it out there, and I got to looking at it, and I said, you know what? I can make a room out of this, and that can be a really great radio room and library because it had a real good, strong foundation under it, but I didn't have any concrete or anything. It was all on sand, even though it had plenty of pillars. 
and I built up a room and insulated it really well and everything and it was a great radio room and it's still standing there today when the rest of the house blows down it'll be there but if a rain comes so strong it could wash it out because it had no foundation but this here means to have a real good foundation under it a real good foundation that room up there is built so well that it could float down a river for 300 miles and it wouldn't come apart <laughs> But the foundation is not firm. But it's built so strong that it would float on top of anything. But now here, I want you to have a good, I want you to have confidence. I want you to have a good foundation. Verse number four. Lest, if any, Macedonians should come with me and find you unprepared for this generosity, for this offering, for this gift, for this tithe, for this, actually this was above and beyond a tithe. We say nothing of yourselves. Be humiliated for our being so confident. We say nothing of ourselves. Be humiliated for our being so confident. Don't be ashamed. Verse number five. Anag Kaon. Un Hage Samen. Parakalese. Marilyn, can you say this next word there? This definite? Tus. Okay, can you say the next word? Adelphos. Thank you. And then Hina. Proelthusen. Ace, Himas, Kai, Prokata, Prokatartiso Susan. That's a long word, very complicated. Prokata Katartiso Susan. Tain, Pro Epi, Pro Eponga, Pro Epong Le. Manane. Eulogion. Himon. Tautain. Atoimane. Ene. Hutos. Hos. Eulogion. Kai. Me. Hos. Pleonexion. The first word, anakeon. That is, is it of great necessity? It is of great necessity, of great anxiety, is it from this word? Therefore, I thought for myself, that comes from ego am I, it's first person singular, first aorist. Indicative middle voice. I thought for myself, I understood for myself, to beg you, to call you beside, that's, that's first heirs infinitive active, the brothers. And that brothers there, two sadelfus, that is accusative plural masculine, definite article, and the same thing with a noun that it describes, adelphos. In order that, they might go beforehand unto you and they might arrange beforehand the thanks having been promised blessing you this ready to be that word ready look at that word at toy main that means ready to be in this manner as the blessing and not as being greedy or greediness. That they might go forward, look at that pro-elthosin, 
Everything is in the subjunctive, isn't it? If you serve the Lord, Marilyn, who's really, God can call you to do something, but who does it? By your own volition, isn't it? Whether you serve the Lord rightly or wrongly is somewhat up to you. Isn't it? All the flesh can get in the way, or the flesh can aid. 9 and verse 5. That is why I thought it necessary to urge you, brother, to go to you before I do and make arrangements in advance for this bondable promised tithe, gift, offering of you so that it may be ready, not as an exhortation, and wrung out of you, but as a generous and willing gift. Now, I used to be carried to Oral Roberts and A.A. A. Allen's tent meetings. Did you ever go to one of them, Sharon? Mm -hmm. Marilyn, did you ever go to one of those tent meetings at all? I doubt it, did you? Never. Never. I was drugged down there because it was a sideshow of carnival. They'd get out there and cast out demons and, and so on and so forth. But one of the greatest things that they just wore you out with was the offering plate. Now, you have to remember back in the 40s and 50s in Bakersfield, California, out there on Union Avenue where all they set these up there at the old fairgrounds. It's there where the new fairgrounds are now. There's a great area out there where they used to put these giant tents up like carnival tents. And we would go there. And they had out all of these aisles, and they'd have uh, carpets down the aisles, and, and they'd get up there, and they'd... I never heard the gospel preached ever, period. I never heard the gospel preached in these places. It's all about healing and all about, I know you. The last time we passed that offering plate out there, you had a $10 bill in your pocket, and you took that and hid it. Or you had a $20 bill or a $50 bill, and yes, sir, you had a $100 bill. And you hid that. And you bypassed God, and you did not give him what was his. Now, I'm going to send this offering plate to you one more time. This is what they'd say. So that you can get right with God. You can walk out of here with miserable, and you can walk out of here with a, a pneumonia tomorrow if you don't give what's God's in, in your pocket. And if you are out there, empty that wallet, wallet, wallet because God's going to fill it up double tomorrow. And I heard this over and over and over and over again. And they'd send that offering plate and send it and send it until they got a big offering from these people. And it was a sideshow. Now, Paul is not putting on a sideshow here. He is asking them to do what God wants them to do and to make an offering that they can be proud of and that they can help the brothers in Jerusalem. That is why I thought it necessary, absolutely necessary, agonizingly necessary to urge these brethren to go to you before I do and make arrangements in advance for this bountiful promised offering of yours so that it may be ready, not as an exhortation or a demand, wrung out of you, but as a generous and willing gift. Now, I used to see Oral Roberts and A.A. A. Allen wring the last dollar and the last dime out of those poor Okies out there that had been picking cotton all day in the fields, pulling those 12-foot-long, 10-foot-long cotton sacks and taking them up and dumping them in there. A. A. Allen wasn't out there doing that. A. A. Allen was empty in those pockets. And Oral Roberts. Yeah, they did. And I witnessed that. And I never heard the gospel preached one time. It's a shame that they wasted all that time and money and never told people how to even be saved. Because they had an opportunity to do it. Sometime there would be 1,000, 1,500 people in those tents. And they could have preached the gospel 
but instead they robbed them. And that's what they did, they robbed them. Nine and verse six, tuto. tuto. De ho speron. Fedominos. Fedominos. Kai. Ferese. Kai. Ho speron. Ep. Eulogias. Eulogias. Ep. Eulogias. Kai. Therese. Moreover, this thing, the one sowing, sparingly, sparingly also he shall reap. And the one sowing upon the blessings, upon blessings, also he shall reap. The one sowing sparingly, he shall. If you go out here and you got 40 acres, and you put out enough seed to plant 20 acres, what you're going to get? A 20 acre crop when you got a 40 acre crop. Paul is telling these brethren there at Corinth, brethren, give. Give sacrificially. This is beyond the tithe now. He already told them they should give the tithes, but right now he's asking for more. Even for more than that. 9 and verse 6 from the Amplified now. Remember that he who sows sparingly and grudgingly will also reap sparingly and grudgingly. And he who sows generously and that blessings may come to someone, that blessings may come to someone, will also reap generous and great blessings. If you don't give, you don't give God the opportunity to bless you by it. If you don't give, you won't give, then how can God multiply your blessing? How can he do it? How can he? This is the last verse for tonight now. Hecostos. Kathos. Pro erete. Okay. Now, Marilyn, look at that word right there. Can you say that word? <coughs> this is an English word also. It's a medical term. Cardia. Oh, cardia. cardia. Oh, May. Yeah, cardia. May. Mm -hmm. Ek. Ek. Lipes. A. X. Anekis. Hilaron. Car, dotain, agape, hotheos. God loves a hilarious giver. What what is a hilarious giver? Joyful. Someone that wants to do it. Each one of you, just as he chose for himself beforehand. He has carried for himself beforehand in the heart, not out of grief. Marilyn, God doesn't want you to take your dollars and give it into the offering plate or to, into the uh, treasurer's hands with tears flowing down your nose. In your face. He doesn't want you to do that. Sharon, he doesn't want you to cry as you're putting money in. Does he? Not with grief. Lee pays. That, he don't want you to, to cry as you're doing this. Or, that's a little correlative particle, page 184 there, A. Out of necessity because you have been forced to do it. He don't want you to feel like you're forced to do this. But, the God he loves the hilarious giver. Cheerful. Cheerful. The laughing, the happy giver. The happy giver. I can't afford this, but 
here it is. Is that a happy giver? No. What is this? Lord, this is all I have, but here it is yours, and I want you to have it. It's yours. I want, you, I want to show you that I love you because you love me, and that you love a hilarious giver. You love a happy giver, one that's heart is full and overflowing with joy and that he wants to share part of his life and labors with the rest of the world and his church. God loves a hilarious giver. God loves a happy giver. One that will chase the preacher down and say, I forgot to put this in the offering plate. I forgot to give this to treasure. You do it. I really want God to have this. This is very important to me. This last uh, Sunday, our church was happy to give money to the Solomon Islands. It thrilled them because they named one of the churches over there, New Hope Missionary Baptist Church. They were really happy about that because that's the name of our church. Not that it named the church after us. New Hope Missionary Baptist Church, New Hope. Giving can you give you great hope, New Hope. Giving can you give you a happy heart. Giving can make your soul soar. And giving can help those that need your help. They can help those that need your help. That offering that we sent to the Solomon Islands is going to help people over there. It's going to help people to have what they need for necessities. There's always a tornado or a typhoon coming through there, blight and disease and, and all kinds of catastrophes. They always have some kind of problems. But those are the happiest people that you've ever seen come to church. There for a while. And their churches are shanties out in the woods, so to speak, out in the jungle. And for a while there, they had uh, a civil war, so to speak. And when they go in there to church, if they drive their bicycles to church, if they had a chance to, buy, to, to drive a car to church, when they got out, the bicycle was gone, and the cars were gone, and the car was just stripped. But they still came to church. It didn't stop them from coming to church. They walked if they had to. And most of them did. I thank God for those people because they're an encouragement to us. And then we're an encouragement to them. And we make them happy when we become hilarious givers and give to them graciously. Because God puts it in our hearts. And I am so thankful Without those people out there that are giving to help support discovertheword.com, we wouldn't be there. We wouldn't be there, and I know it makes some of you so happy to do that. Thank you. God touched your hearts. I remember one time when I was going to Fish Lake Valley, our DTW at Western Nevada headquarters, going up there, and I didn't have a dime. Not, I had no money to even get back here or even to eat when I was there. I had spent all of my money trying to keep the website up. I didn't have enough money to feed myself or to buy gasoline. And I said, Lord, here I am again. <laughs> There's people out there all over this world, and I know you can reach in every area on the other side of the world or next door or whatever, but I need some help, Lord. And that night I had a $100 offering on PayPal. I looked at that and I said, thank you, Lord. Boy, that'll buy enough gas to get me back to Old River because <laughs> I had spent all every dime I had. I needed DVDs and CDs to record this stuff on. I had no money. Next day came another $1,000. I said, wow, Lord, boy, this is really great. From the other side of the world. It wasn't in New York. It was plumb on the other side of the world. I said, Lord, you're reaching people's hearts out there all over this world. And I need it. And thank you. And I just cried. 
I was so happy because I felt like I had no hope for a while. I wasn't going to let the website go down. So I took every dime I had and put in it when I had no mo money to take care of myself because that was more important than my food and my gasoline. Is it that way to you? It makes me happy to do that. Happy. But sometimes we, sometimes we give more than we have. And guess what happened? I gave it laughingly and happily, and here it came. Here it came. And the website's standing today because of people like that. Do you have any questions? Hilarious givers? Do you have any questions? All of you hilarious givers out there, thank you. God thanks you. Nine, two through seven. That's where we were today. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this message. We need it. We need it. They need it. The whole world needs it. Thank you for this message from your word. You know, Father, people ask me to preach on certain subjects. I just wait till it comes up. Now, I don't preach on giving too much, but here it was, these two chapters in your word in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, and there it is. So I preached it. And I even heard it. Now you do your job and deal with these hearts that they may be blessed in every way. I pray if there's one out there that doesn't know you that they will believe if Jesus Christ, your son, came into this world to die for and save sinners. They was buried in a grave after three days that he rose from the dead. He died for our sins and was raised for our justifications. And he lives forevermore. And we tie it to him, our Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.